is just a part of life. All of life has to change. It really is one of the most challenging problems humanity's had to face. Due to climate change, sustainability has never been more important. But the question remains, what role football has to play? Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. Okay. Um, <laughs> together now. So when you guys like look at the football landscape in general, do you see it from the outside looking in and just be like, this is a mess? I mean, I'd say that football as an industry is quite far behind. You know, you can find these great exemplars of mm -hmm. individual clubs which have either had a leader or a chairperson yeah. or someone who's got a vision. Yeah. Inevitably, the mainstream is always several steps behind that. You can look to other sports and to other industries and other sectors, and everyone's tackling similar challenges. Yeah. Because all the impacts we're talking about come from the way we move, the way we power our lives, and, and what we put in our mouths. Yeah. Dale, how are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm good, you? Nice to see you. Energy, transport, and food. In those three things, you'll find 80% of everybody's personal carbon footprint, and that applies to a football club, a rugby club, a, a business of any size, a whole country. Forest Green Rovers in the UN called it the greenest football club in the world and a lot of your sponsorships now and your, your advertising stuff it's, it's ethical and it's something that you believe in. Has that been a really big effort on your part to make sure it's not just a title? We do this because we believe in it. For our kit for example we brought bamboo into the world as a football uh, material. Yeah. This year we're introducing coffee grounds and you know we've got an organic pitch and we've taken out single-use plastic and you know we, we just do everything that we think needs to be done. Football clubs really need to think about their impact in probably three main areas. The impact of all the things they own, so their, obviously the stadium, yeah. their training facilities. The next part is the impact of all the, the different items that a football club get to buy. So yeah, the kits for players, the food and drink they sell on okay, match days. Yeah, yeah. And then the third element, which is probably the, the hardest part of all, is then all the transport and travel around football. If you learn from the festival world, they lay on extra buses, they give people cheaper tickets for cycling. You know, how do you make the fan experience of travel better? Yeah, I mean, if you look at food, for instance, I don't know about you, but food at football is disgustingly expensive, the beer is crap. I mean, if you, you know, it, here's an opportunity to take something which is a big part of the footprint, which is the food, and yeah. turn it from something that's absolutely dreadful at the moment into something better. But it's a huge cultural power of football, so when clubs start doing it, they send a message to everybody. Mm and it changes what becomes normal. And if you start to make doing the right thing and regenerating the planet an aspirational thing, people can kind of go, oh, well, this is where the way the world is. If you get players to start taking this stuff seriously, and to be the coolest footballer in the world is to be one who's also contributing to the regeneration of our planet. Yeah. Mm. You know, that has more power than, you know, any politician standing up and saying, you've got to take climate change seriously. Yeah. 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 Well, How you doing, man? You good? Bad, yeah. When you're at Newport County, I was at that game. I was going to say. I, really? I, what, you I, remember? I see the way the clubs run, yeah. um, it affects us every day as players. So um, in terms of the food um, and even the pitch, which obviously they don't use any, any um, chemicals. Yeah. And um, you kind of maybe think, what's the deeper meaning to that? And then start maybe affecting your lifestyle a little bit. I'm not going to preach like I, 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 I you know, um, I'm 100% eco-friendly. Yeah, eco and and, yeah. But um, it's definitely um, sparked, sparked my thought process into how I can um, live, live that way. Footballers are role models, so I think if we set that example of, of um, with sustainability, I think a lot of younger impressionable fans will, will follow, so I think it's a massive role and something that we can influence, definitely. Fast forward 10 years, sustainability in football, what does that look like? Going back to talking about stadiums, yeah. I think it's fair to say that they are likely to be fully powered by renewable energy. Yeah. LED lighting throughout different food, the vegan products that are coming through now are going to be almost indistinguishable from yeah. um, your meat pie, but without the cruelty. The local transport networks are likely to be far more electrified, so you may be getting an electric bus or electric train. We'll have to be taking the grass cuttings off the pitch and using that to power the under pitch eating to keep the frost off. The transformation that will have occurred will mean that the impact of football will be much, much lower yeah. while sustaining all the, the joy and celebratory stuff that we go for in the first place. Yeah. I can't wait to watch Arsenal lose with LED lighting. That's just... <laughs> football, sport more generally, it's a piece of how we live, isn't it? You know? But uh, everything has to change. We need to live more sustainable, that's obvious.
The beautiful game should happen on a beautiful planet, and right yeah, now it's not. Yeah. It's actually the ugly game making the planet uglier, yeah. and we need to change that around. That's it. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's a, a proper... sound bite and half. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hi, it's Timsy here from MOTDX. Thank you for checking out our video on the BBC Sport YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and of course, hit the notification bell so then you never miss an upload. And you can check out another one of our videos right here. See you soon.